Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to create our first MVC application. Now I'm not going to go into too much depth about what it is you're going to see in this video. I just kind of want to lay out the basics of an MVC application for you to see. So first we're going to create a controller. Then we're going to create a model which is going to hold the data that we want to display to our user. And then finally, we're going to create a view that's going to be the actual HTML or razor, uh, razor view that we're going to display to our user. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing we're going to do is create our controller. I'm going to go to the controllers folder and select add new item. And I'm going to select MVC controller class from our add new items list. Now, by default, it wants to name this class home controller. And we're going to keep it that way. It turns out that this is very important, that we follow this naming convention. We always want our controller names to end with the last word of controller. So I'm going to leave it home controller and select the add button here. And the first thing I want to point out is that home controller inherits from this controller class. And this controller class is part of the MVC framework that we got with the NuGet package. You want all of your controller classes to inherit from this base controller class. So you'll also notice that there is this index method that was automatically created, and it has this return type of I action result. Now methods that exist on controllers are often referred to as actions. So this will often be called the index action on your home controller and its return type is I action result. Then you'll see that there is a return that of this uh, view method. And the view method, if I hover the mouse over it here, you can see creates a view result object that renders a view to the response. So the view method returns a type of view result and view result inherits from this I action result interface. So as long as your return type returns some sort of class that inherits from this I action result interface, you're going to be fine. But this view method is very handy because it inherits from the controller class that is our base class for our home controller. This is kind of what makes this whole thing work is that everything is using this simple convention that comes from this base controller class and that each one of our methods returns this I action result and it uses one of those methods that comes from our controller class that returns a type of object that already inherits from I action result. Now the controller class, this home controller class that we just created, needs to orchestrate the data and return that data to the view and then show that view to the user. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and create our model. Now our model is going to be underneath our models folder. I'm going to right click on the models folder and select add and we're just going to go ahead and create a, a plain old class object or often referred to as a poco class so we're going to just create this class and i'm going to create a contact class now this contact class is going to have two properties we'll say prop string uh, we'll do first name prop string last name now this model could really come from anywhere, say an entity framework or from a service, or typically you're going to create some sort of repository and that repository class is gonna go out and retrieve the data for you and return it back. But in this case, we're going to use our controller class to arrange the data and get the model. So to do that, in my controller class, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new instance of contact. We'll call it contact. And I need to go ahead and bring in that contact model. So we'll do control period to bring in a using statement. And we'll say contact equals new contact. And we'll just go ahead and set the values here. So we'll do first name. I'm just going to use my name. So we'll do Steve. You can, of course, use your own name or your dog's name, whichever you want. Last name. And all right. So this is arranging the data for our model. 
and it's probably a good practice to have this arrangement of your data in some other class so like i said a repository class which we will be doing a repository class later on in this series but for right now this is perfectly fine i'm just going to arrange the data here in my controller that sets the name on my contact object and now we need to pass this model called contact to our view and luckily for us this view method has several overloads one of those overloads accepts a model or just any old object as the model to pass along to the view. So I'm just gonna pass along this contact object that I created and pass it into my view method. And the view method will pass that along to the view that we're about to create. Let's go ahead and save this controller. And now let's create our view. So I'm gonna to go to the views folder and I first need to actually create a subfolder underneath my views folder. Now the name of this views folder is very important. That's because again, we're using convention or a naming convention over configuration. So I need to name this subfolder home. And that's because this home folder is going to contain all of the views that relate to the home controller. So I'm gonna leave it as home. And now underneath this home folder, we're going to add a new item. And this is going to be our view. So we're gonna say MVC view page. And you can see once again, the default name that it comes up with for this MVC view page is index. Now, where do you suppose it gets this index name from? Why do you think it wants to by default name it index? Well, if we look at the name of our action of index, that's where it gets the name, right? The index action on our home controller is where we're also going to find under the home folder, our index view. So I'm going to select add, and now we have an index view under our home folder, which our home controller is going to, when it runs the index action, the view method we'll go out and look for the index view under the home folder. So I hope you're starting to see the picture here. There's a convention, a naming convention here that you need to follow in order for MVC to work. So now in our view, I need to tell it what the model data type is. So we're passing along a type of contact to the view. And so I need to declare in my index uh, razor view here what the model type is gonna be. And you do that by using the at symbol with the keyword model with a lowercase m. And then you're going to give it the full namespace to your class. So we're gonna say Contoso models contact. And that is how you declare what the model is for your index view. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to go ahead and start creating some HTML code. In the title, we'll go ahead and call this home. And in the body, we'll say hi there. And now I can use the data that's being passed into this model object or being passed into the view as the model. I can actually refer to that model data using once again, the at symbol but now I'm going to use the keyword of model with a capital M. So this model declaration up here with the lowercase m is declaring what the class object is that is the type of model. And now that it knows that, we use a model with a capital M to actually go into the object and get the name. So we've declared that this model is a type of contact, and now the capital M model is going to be able to look and see what the properties on my object are, and I'm going to say first name and last name. And I'm even just going to put an exclamation point to show that we're really excited. One of the great things about the Razor engine is that it's very capable of figuring out and distinguishing the difference between what is part of a Razor command with this at symbol versus what is the text that should be displayed as part of the HTML 
or just regular text. So it kind of has this intelligence about it that automatically knows that model last name comes from model and that the exclamation point is actually text that should come after the value that we get from that last name property. I'm gonna go ahead and save all of this. And now let's go ahead and just run our application. We've got everything ready to go. So let's go ahead and run it. So when your browser opens up, it's going to go right to the page that you just created. And this may be a little bit confusing because you may be wondering, well, what was this whole thing about creating a home controller and creating an index? Why isn't it needing me to be more specific about the location that I'm looking for on the web server? Well, that's because here in our startup class, we use this use MVC with default routes. So there is this default route portion of MVC that's included with this version of the middleware that we installed that basically automatically by default points to the home controller and looks for the index action on the home controller and displays whatever the view is that it returns back, which is the index view that we created. So by default, use MVC with default route, we'll go to the home controller, look at the, and, and run the index action to return a result here for our base home location, our, our base location on our web server. Now, additionally, I could go to the URL of home index, and that will actually display the same information, the same hi there, Steve Bishop webpage. And if I change from home index, to just simply home, it does the same thing. That's because of all of this thing called default routing, which we'll talk about in the next video.